If you're the owner of a small business or a nonprofit, one of the most important things you can do is to gather feedback from the people you're trying to serve, your clients or customers. You can certainly do that on paper, but today I'd like to show you how you can use Microsoft Forms to gather and manage important information that will help move your small business or nonprofit forward. Hi there, I'm Mark from Valor Excel. Thank you so much for joining me today. In a small business or a nonprofit, it's easy to delude yourself into thinking that you have a very clear perspective of how well you're doing what you do. But the truth is the only way you'll ever know for sure is to ask the people on the receiving end of your services, your clients or your customers. And surveys are an excellent way to do that. Today, I'd like to show you how to build a survey in Microsoft Forms and if you have a Microsoft account, you have access to forms. It's very easy to use, very intuitive, and today I'll show you how to create a survey and how to gather the information from it in a constructive way that will help you to identify trends in what you're doing within your business and to enable you to make adjustments if you see that something isn't quite meeting your expectations. So let's dive right in. All right, and again, if you have a Microsoft account, you already have access to forms. So the first thing you want to do is to launch Microsoft 365. And as soon as it opens, you can go to the App Launcher and then select Forms. And when Forms first opens, it will show you any of the recent forms that you've worked on, but it also gives you the option to create a new form. And you also have the option by clicking on this drop down arrow to select a new quiz. Now, one of the main differences between a form and a quiz is that with a quiz, you're really only looking for one answer or maybe an answer that says all of the above, but you have a specific response that you're trying to get. And so with a quiz, you can actually assign a point value, a numeric value for a correct answer. And that's how you can determine whether or not someone has a passing score. But with what we're trying to do today with a survey, we're more interested in just gathering general information. So for us, a new form would be the best choice. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And when a new form opens up, it will basically default to a standard template. And what's nice is we can add things to this and make a lot of customizations. And so the first thing that I wanted to do here is just show you, if we go up here to the top and click on theme, you have the ability to add a solid color background to your form. You also have the ability to select from these stylized graphics. And if you click on the plus sign, you can upload an image of your own, or you can do some additional color customization. But what we'll do is just for the general form itself, Let's go ahead and pick one of these down here, and there it's been added. Now, here is where we give the title to our form, and I'd like to also add an image here. So if we click on this Insert Media icon, this now enables us to go out and do an upload. And so from here, we can select whatever we would like, and I'm going to go ahead and add a Valor Excel logo. Actually, let's use that one instead. And there we go. Now, this is also where we can go ahead and add a title to our form. So we'll call this a customer satisfaction survey. And for the description, we'll say, please tell us how we're doing. Now, if we want to preview this, we can come up here to the top and click on preview. And that looks great. There we have our logo and the title of our form. And that's where we can go from there. Now, when you have the basic default of the form right now, you have to add all of the individual questions that you want to ask in the survey. And if we click on add new, we'll see a couple of things here. It's giving us some examples that we used before in previous forms. So we could select any of these. If you click down here on the second bullet, you'll see that it's also opening up to recommended questions. And you can easily construct a survey just working from these and selecting whatever you would like. 
But what I'd like to do is X out of this, and we'll go ahead and manually add everything that we'd like to ask. Now, I'd like to go through each of these four, and then we also have a couple of other options here that I'd like to briefly talk about. But let's first deal with these. So let's do choice right now. And this is kind of the standard multiple choice response where you can ask a question and then the person that is completing the survey can select whichever one they would like. So let's go ahead and ask a question here. We'll ask, how did you hear about us? And let's say, Facebook ad, radio spot, There we go, so we have a couple of choices now. And what we can do is also, you can select multiple answers if you'd like. The way this defaults, it will only allow the person to complete one of these. But if we say multiple answers, then that can apply to a couple of different ones. So maybe they saw a Facebook ad, but they also heard a radio spot. Now, we can also set this as required, which will basically insist that the person complete this before they move on in the survey. And however you set the initial section, that will kind of set the patterns for the ones to follow. They'll default the same way. But you can modify this individually for each one of the questions that you ask. But let's go ahead and just keep that at required. And so there is basically what we would do for multiple choice. So let's add another question. Now for this one, let's select text. And this is basically where you're asking a question and the person completing the survey will write their own answer in. So let's ask something of them here. Okay, now we're asking them and we're giving them the ability to type their own answer in. We'll go ahead and select long answer because that will give a little bit more space for the person to give us their feelings. And as you can see, this did default to required because we had made the very first question required as well. So that's how you would do an open text answer. Now for this third one, let's go ahead and do a rating. And this is basically the classic where you're asking them to rate on a scale. Now from here, it will default to giving them five different options to choose from, but we can make this up to 10 if we would like. So on a scale of one to 10, and we'll basically let them kind of give us the ranking. Now it defaults to a star, but you also have the option to do numbers. You can do a thumbs up, a smiley face, and also a heart. Now, I kind of like the number because I feel like that just gives you a concrete thing to tie each one of those two. So let's go with that. And then for the next section here, we'll do date. This is where you can ask a question and then allow the person completing the survey to click here to select a date from a calendar. All right, I'd like to add two more questions here. And to access these, we'll click on the drop down. Feel free to experiment with these, but I wanted to show you the first two in particular. And the very first one here is ranking, and this is a very interesting one. So what you can do is you can ask the person completing the survey to decide which order of importance the things that you have listed are. So let's ask a question like that. And now we can add here whatever we would like. And let's add one more. All right, and I'll show you how this one would work if we come over here to preview. Now what will happen is we're listing these different things and we're giving the person completing the survey the ability to put them in whatever order they would like. So if color selection is the most important, they can click here 
and just continue to move it up to wherever they would like it to be. And you can also move things down. And that's really a good way that you can go ahead and have predetermined items and then just get the person completing the survey to put them in the order that they're valuing them. That's a very helpful feature. All right, and the last type of question that I would like to add is also from the drop-down. And this is the Likert scale, which is a very common format where you can make a statement and then you let the person decide how it applies to them. So what we can do up here is make a general statement. And now from here we can list different things. So we can say, and now what we do is click over here in option. Let me go ahead and start typing agree. And now this will give us all the different options that we can add. So if we just do add all, now that's perfect. So they can select that they agree, strongly agree, disagree, strongly disagree, or they're neutral. And we could even add additional ones. But that way we can put in whatever we would like. And let's do another one. And so on. So when they are completing the survey then, they will have this as the lead in. And for each one of these, they have to tell us how they feel. It's a very handy tool. So once you have the survey completed, you can come up here under Collect Responses. And this is basically where you determine how to get that survey out to someone. So it will default to only people in your organization being able to respond. But if we're creating a customer survey, we want to be able to email that to anyone that we would like. So we'll go ahead and check anyone can respond. And as soon as we do this now, it's created a URL that we could copy and paste into an email, and that will take people directly to the survey. We can also come down right here and enter someone's email address. And now we can click Send, and it will automatically send out an invitation to complete the survey. One other option that you have if you come up here and click on the ellipsis is that you can collaborate or duplicate. And so by doing that, you can share a link that will let other people in your organization view and edit the survey. And you can also share it as a template, which is basically giving a link of what you've already set up and someone can duplicate it to create something new. So those are just a few other options that are available. All right, and now let's go ahead and actually complete the form as if we're the person who received it. So this is what it would look like for them. And you'll notice here with the red asterisk, it says required. And we did go ahead and let everything be defaulted to that, but we could have modified each one of these to make them optional or required. So let's complete the questions. How did you hear about us? We'll say Facebook ad and poster. How did you feel when you first walked into the store? There you go. Good feedback. I was pleased with the level of customer service I received, and we'll say yes. When did you first visit our store? And from there, we can select off of the calendar and pick whatever date, and it will be inserted for us. And then here, please arrange the below factors in the order of their importance to you. So let's say that included accessories, that was the top one. So let's move that up there. And let's say the next one was price options. And we'll go ahead and say that we want to move product variety down. So there you go. We can change the order. I was very pleased with the experience I had with the website. And we'll say strongly agree. Parking, let's say strongly disagree. And inventory. Uh, we'll say agree. And now we've completed all of the fields and we can click submit. Now we have a response that gets generated here. And that way we know they've completed it and we will receive confirmation via an automated email. So now we can actually go back and look at the responses. And you'll see here we have a one indicating that one person has completed the survey. And there we go. It shows us the average time it took to complete. 
and we can view the results. So by doing that, it will actually take us into the survey and we can see specifically what they put into place for each. This also gives you some statistical data, which is useful once you have a variety of responses. You can begin to look at trends and figure out how things fit together. But one of the best features here is that you have the ability to open this in Excel. And what is really helpful here is that as people are completing your surveys, this will automatically feed the data into an Excel spreadsheet. And what's very convenient is you can scroll through. It's basically breaking all the components of your survey form into these individual columns. And once you have multiple responses, then you have the ability to click and you can filter those responses. So if, for example, with this one, if you had folks giving responses from 1 to 10, you could see just how many people gave you a 10 or a 5 or a 2. And it's a very handy way to identify trends because that way you can see what are most people experiencing. You can also see what was the day that most people visited the first time. That's something that you can tie in with your advertising because if you see that a lot of people came on the 17th and you know that you did a big Facebook ad campaign on the 14th, that may show that that was really a beneficial marketing tool. So this is all extremely useful information. And you can also cut and paste this into your own spreadsheet if you had additional fields that you wanted to be able to track. So it's just a very handy way to have an automated compilation of all the results from the surveys that people are completing. And that's basically how you construct and analyze the data that you receive from a survey in Microsoft Forms. Microsoft Forms is an easy way to create surveys, and surveys are truly one of the most powerful tools in your toolbox. Getting real, honest feedback from the people you're serving can help you to understand how effective you are in the moment. And when you look at trends over time, you can get a clear understanding of what's working and what's not working in your organization. But beyond surveys, is there another tool that can help you to understand whether or not you're on a healthy trajectory? There actually is. If you click on the link in the description below, you can download a free PDF called Taking Your Organization's Temperature. It consists of 30 statements about the health of your organization. Go through, respond to each, there's a corresponding numeric value, and when you tally them up at the end, the total will tell you whether or not the approach you're taking is inactive, reactive, or proactive. If the information I shared with you today was helpful, please give this video a like, and in the comments below, let me know what some of the challenges are that you face in trying to be effective in reaching your clients or your customers. Please subscribe to this channel. We have a lot of great content coming in the days ahead, specifically tailored for small businesses and nonprofits. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please come back again next time. And remember, at Valor XL, we're committed to helping you do smart work. I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.